Welcome to Youth Radio, X Oakland Music Festival Producer Showcase. I'm glad you guys made it out. Um, for future reference, you guys are currently sitting in our new-ish arts venue. So Youth Radio has been building this out over the past bunch of years. So you guys are one of the first bigger public events we've done here. Um, I'm about to introduce these four producers that were kind enough to come through and explain how they create the music they make. Oh, that's the bus I thought I was feeding back. Um, <laughs> and so, yeah, we got four people here. They've all worked on like half the genres coming out of the Bay right now, rap, R&B, um, modern funk, soul. Um, and they all have slightly different approaches, but they've all been doing this for a long time. So um, hopefully we'll have some time at the end. You can ask them questions, but they're all gonna kind of talk about who they've worked with, um, their inspirations, their process, and the software and things that they use. And then you're gonna get to see each one of them break down one of their beats, the layers, and stuff like that. Um, so without further ado, first up we got Kalia. Hey, everybody. Um, Okay, um, I just want to thank, I want to take some time to thank, out, um, thank Hunter and Ben for, uh, you know, thinking of me when they, when they put together this event. I'm a youth radio alumni many moons ago. Um, I'm kind of old. <laughs> I know you guys are looking at me like, God, how old is he? Um, but, you know, um, I've been producing for a long time, uh, Brandon and Ben and Tracks up here were kind enough to give me the, the gift of music. And um, I've been, it, you know, it's, it's, it's helped me uh, get through a lot of things. And it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's an awesome experience. So I guess we have a, a pretty fl fr uh, free flowing uh, format. Um, but yeah, I, I produce for HBK. Um, and I got a lot of my game from youth radio. So please treasure this, uh, this opportunity to be in the room with, with people, your peers, and, and, and the folks around you that are just ready to give you game. Um, but without further ado, I'm gonna break down this song that I produced for my brother. Um, his name is Pilo. And this song is featuring uh, this young lady named Samaria, who's like oh. just this awesome singer. Um, and, uh, Okay. You can do intros first. Oh, intros first? Oh, man, I thought you were just handing me the mic. You know. <laughs> pass all okay, pass it on down. All right, bet. Rospect. <laughs> what it do, y'all? How y'all doing? Everybody good? I go by the name of Jay Ant. I am a producer and an artist. Uh, I'm a part of uh, HBK Gang, uh, The Believer Circle. I produce for uh, a lot of different people, worked with a lot of different people. I produce for uh, everybody in HBK, g Easy. I've been working with Kaylani a lot. Of course, they and all are from the Bay, but those are homies. And uh, yeah, I mean, I've been producing for like, I've been producing for a long time. I started producing when I was in like 10th grade. I've been out of high school for a minute now, so it's been quite some time. And uh, a lot of the stuff that I produce, is is partially hyphy sometimes, it's hyphy as hell, because you feel me, I'm hell hyphy on my mama, <laughs> you feel me? But I like to tone it down every now and again, you feel me? So a lot of my influences are definitely like, we. I think all of us on here got the same, got a lot of the same exact influences. I, I'm especially speaking for Track and Kuya, because uh, we definitely came up on a lot of the same stuff. A lot of stuff I came up on, besides hyphy music, a lot of, of course, a lot of N.E.R.D., a lot of Neptunes, for sure. A lot of jazz, a lot of R&B, a lot of just just forward-thinking music. Like, for me, as a producer, I probably wouldn't be a producer without Andre, 3000, Pharrell, and Kanye. Those are the three people that make, that have me look at music in a different way. Looking at music, like, in a sense of where, like, okay, it's not just a bunch of just, it's not just a, just, just a bunch of just, you know what I mean, slapping ass beats or whatever. It's just, like, some forward, very forward progressive music that has you thinking a little bit more. Cause you know what I mean? Like when I'm young, when I was young, all I wanted to do was really function. But when somebody threw me a CD, a NERD CD, when I was in like 10th grade, it completely changed my whole life. So ever since then, we've been just going in, oh, college dropout Kanye. After that, it was just like, oh yeah, I'm trying to make music. I want to make music. So you hear a lot of different uh, sides of me. I don't know if you've, if you, even if you've ever heard of my music, some of you haven't, but a lot of it is, like I said, it's house influence, 
hypey, 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 hypey. And, uh, and a little bit of trap, a little bit of this and that, but it's real, 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 just like anything progressive, anything progressive that's going to like push boundaries and, and next level, that's kind of what I'm with, so. So, shout out to Diane Kuya. Um, my name is Trackademics. Um, I started here at Youth Radio as well, many, many, many moons ago. <coughs> I actually, I actually, yeah. You guys heard, I taught Kuya. Uh, shout out to Honor Roll Brandon, that's my crew, the Honor Roll. Um, Honor Roll, 108K, as some of y'all may know him. Um, our whole crew kind of started here at Youth Radio. Um, but yeah, I've been making music since I was about 15. And um, you know, I started on a karaoke machine and a Casio keyboard, if y'all even know what that is. Um, and then Mario Paint on Super Nintendo. Um, Anything I get my hands on, um, but yeah, I've been I've been using uh, Reason as, as a software for a long time, Pro Tools. Um, but before that, I started on an ASR eighty um, eight. A lot of people use that, like ASR ten, like Kanye, uh, the RZA from Wu Tang, um, Hieroglyphics. A lot of those folks, Alchemist, old school nineties keyboard. But um, yeah, I've I've been making music a long time. Play the saxophone. I, we were just talking about it earlier outside. I, I bought my first saxophone across the street at the now defunct Best Music. Um, yeah, RIP for real. Um, but yeah, been doing music for forever. Um, I've worked with a lot of different people. Um, HBK, definitely. Um, I forget, Lyrics Born, um, Teacher Moses. I've done a lot of remixes. So yeah. All right. Yes, yes, what's up, y'all? My name is Max Kane. I'm also old, but I got a young heart. Um, I come from the DJing world. I was like a competitor DJ. I battled. I used to put it down for the Bay Area, compete worldwide, and be using like Bay Area songs to diss the other DJ. You know, use Kick the Sneak and say something real foul to the other DJ and just look at that fool and know he doesn't even speak English, stuff like that. But, um, I'm also a producer. I come from a, a musical family, so like I started playing keys at a young age, started playing drums, guitars, like just like Jason said, just like pretty much everybody on this panel, I would just touch whatever I got my hands on. So uh, it led me to being a producer of experimental stuff, funk, hip hop, all different kinds. I kind of bend my boundaries a little bit as much as I can, a little, a little more than I should, but I like to do art, so that's what I do. And um, yeah, I've been doing it for a long time. Been DJing in clubs and trying to rock parties for a minute now. And um, I just want to thank All Day Play for letting me, uh, or Youth Radio, for letting me come up. And uh, yeah, have fun. Yee! All right. Thank you guys. So first up, um, we're gonna let Jay Ant go first because as you guys, many of you maybe know, he's got a show at the New Parish. Um, Later tonight. Yeah, I got a show tonight. I go on stage at like 12, uh, but I think the door's open. What time the door's open, you know? Shit, but it's gonna be popping. Y'all should get there. Shit finna be lit. <laughs> um, so so how, so what's, what, what we doing, man? How we doing um, this? I'm gonna get you this cord. Just like click a drum in one of the drum machines or something, or just hit play or something so we can hear something really quickly to make sure you're... Okay. 
Well, so um, I didn't mention earlier, but I think I think a lot of us. We, I use Reason. Uh, I use Reason now. I'm a, I'm a propeller head. I've been using Reason for a minute. I started off on Fruity Loops, it, but I moved, had to move over to Reason. I got stuck over here, so I've been really enjoying it. Reason Nine is what I use. Um, when I try to make, when I try to produce, it definitely depends on who I'm producing for. But if I'm producing for myself, it uh, it it kind of is just like everything else, like every other kind of art. It's it's all like, it's all based on. For me, it's all about the detail. Like I'm not, you know what I mean? Like we 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 all like we know what it's like throw a bass line and an 808 on and a snap. Nine times out of ten, that's all you really need. It's that 808 and that bass line, that snap, that ba 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 ba. If you really want to get there, if you really want to take it there, you could. But, um, you know what I mean, like with just for the sake of just trying to progress music and just taking it to the next level and taking it to different levels, I try to take take every everything that I'm doing and kind of look at it uh, just like you would look at a picture. Everything in the picture, the smallest details count. They don't have to be perfect, but the smallest details count. I can be working for me, like I could come with the drums first, I can come with the chords first. A lot of times I like to come with chords first. If I'm like making anything other than uh, some knock, if I'm making some blap, I'm coming with straight blap first. But if I'm making if I'm making some uh, something different, I like to come with just like melodies and chords first, and um, and then uh, from that point, it's like you never really know what you could uh, what what's gonna really happen. You have to just kind of just see you know, I'm gonna get those ideas out, and then after you get an idea. You kind of, I kind of just stay on the same. Like I don't know if you guys are familiar with bars, like bar counts or whatever, but I know some of you guys are. I kind of sometimes just stay on the, f the same eight bars for hella long. Like I'd be on the same eight bars for like two days, three days, maybe even longer than that. Like I've been working on this project I got coming out called Blue Diamond Dreams for two years, two and a half years. People think I'm, people don't even think I'm gonna put out no music. It's crazy. Release date, but, <laughs> but, um, no, uh. I definitely take a lot of time on that. With that being said, so there's a lot of details that go into it, and what I'm all about is just making sure all the frequencies and everything, there's a place for everything. And I don't know if anybody's ever gonna tell you this, but as a producer, the most important thing for me, and I think, is space, because you have to have space in everything. In a relationship, if you think about music, music is a relationship between sounds. Like a whole bunch of sounds stuck together forever, like a marriage, you feel me? They're there, they're stuck. But if you don't ever have, if you don't ever have, for real, that's what it is. You're bonded. We're, it's me and you, nigga. It's us. That's how they feel. <laughs> like, you feel me? So, like, it's, it's like a, it's a relationship between sounds. And in any relationship, whether it's family, whether it's love, whether whatever, you need space. It's the only time you can, you can actually really feel it out and you just have time to go back to it and really fuck with it. And excuse my language, but that's what, you know what I mean? So... The space is the most important thing, so I try to make this sure there's a lot of space and there's a lot of room for the, just the music to just breathe and then uh, take details. So this right here, this is a song that's going on my project called Blue Diamond Dreams, and this is a song that I just produced. It is featuring this girl named Sid from the internet. She's awesome. So she's very fire. If you ever heard of her, if you haven't, but she will be on my project, and this is a uh, this is uh, I haven't really played this for nobody, so I hope you guys really enjoy it, and I'll break it down right after, all right? Baby, tell me 
Y'all fuck with me or what? What's up? All right, cool. changing faces give it up folks <laughs> appreciate it thank you thank, thank you kindly thank you kindly and that and as you can see that was definitely not uh that wasn't hyphy but it was you know what i mean it was definitely some some music and what that was was definitely house inspired a little bit more abstract with the bass lines and stuff it's not completely mixed the frequencies aren't all the way to where they're supposed to be, but this is a very rough, but I definitely want to share with you guys and break down what exactly is going on. So with the with the music and how this even starts. <laughs> this is right here. So with the music and how this even starts is uh, these are like really low filtered samples in the beginning. Just really low filtered samples, just enough room and space. There's no music, just a sample and drum. A very low automated synth and if you pay attention the automated synth is means that the synth is slow and slowly through over time I'm just gonna keep turning the synth up so where it goes from soft to hard and that type of shit right there that type of shit right there now a lot of people a lot of people when they produce they like overcompensate, but there's like they put like a lot of sounds on top of each other, on top of each other, on top of each other. But it's really not. A lot of times it's just one sound that's just automated all the way up. And these are real secrets that people are just not gonna tell you. They're gonna let you just, oh, I'm a, you, how did you do that? They're gonna be like, <laughs> <laughs> that's all they're gonna tell you. So I'm telling you, sometimes it's not like a lot of sounds. You wanna just leave room, automate them synths up, and then it changes from one sound to another sound, now you're giving your music, you're giving your production some sort of variation. It's not being, it's not boring. It's not just the same repetitive sound over and over again. So just in just changing the frequency of the pad right there and is, is, is deep. And then also just breaking it down to when we get to this part, cause I'm about to wrap this up. When we get to this part right here. Space, a chord and an 808 on top of each other, and just moving. It sounds like it's a lot of shit happening, but it's just really three sounds tops. And then it comes back, just a lead and a drum. All the rest of the sounds right there, and it's just all about just creating space. So, any if, if if anything learned from what I'm saying today is. Um, when you're making your music, try to make room for every sound. There's sound frequencies, there's your lows, there's your mids, there's your highs. If you put a whole bunch of highs in one spot, they're gonna sound crazy. You gotta know what you're doing. You gotta place every, there's a place for everything. There's a place for everybody. There's a place for you. There's a place for your socks. There's a place for your clothes. There's a place to go eat down the street. There's a place for everything. So in music, there's a place for everything. So you gotta be careful where you put everything and make sure you're putting it in the proper place. But uh, that's, the, that's what I focus on. After you get your melodies and your keys and whatever, you just gotta figure out where you're placing everything. The arrangement will turn, hey, an OG told me some real shit when I was young. Let me tell you what he told me. He said, look, look, the arrangement of your beat will change your beat from a $50 beat to a $50,000 beat. You can have the same six sounds, but the way you arrange your beat versus the way that you just, 
if you just have it repetitive, it can go from $50 to 50000 So just marinate on that for a little bit and uh, ask my time if there's any questions. What's up with it, Lil' Uh, shout out to the homie Slimothy for sure. <laughs> the, the sound that I started off with, this is uh, this is a vocal chop right here. Just a vocal chop. It's just a, it's just part of Sid's vocals. I took some of Sid's vocals, chopped it in low frequency. Automation, autom yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, a lot of times, uh, like I'm automating the, the 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 pad, the synth that I'm using. That's usually being automated, and there's a lot of uh, just automation in the in the uh, in the uh, in the 808s and stuff too. Because you know, 808 is just the way it moves, just a round sound. It can feel like a wobble. So when it f if it the way it all on the way it wobbles is how it moves you. So if you automate it certain ways and play with it, it's all where your mind takes it. You just can't be scared to touch stuff and just know what it does. You have to actually know what things do because everything that's in this program and in every program is there for a reason. It does something. It might be very small and like at, at the time, but in the overall picture that made just all the difference. You know what I'm saying? Like something's crazy is just like dealing with the attack. When you deal with the attack of a sound, like is it that A under it? If the way, if you, if that's, that's, very, that's the same as saying like, so if your attack is turned all the way down, you're like, ah! If your attack is turned all the way low, you're like, ah, and that's the difference between somebody really yelling at you like, ah, and a girl like, ah, it's the difference. You're going to listen a little different, right? That's how you translate it to music. But any more questions? Well, we we usually we record on a fifty dollar beat first, and then we go back to the fifty dollar beat and do post production and change it around, and that's just all feeling. After we get the vocals on that thing, you know what I mean, and it sound the way it want, that we want, we got an idea of what we're gonna do. That's when we start breaking it down and moving things around and and making it fun. You know what I mean? That's where it's all at. There's no specific arrangement. There is no structure in music. Music is like something that you just vibe out to and have fun. There's a structure for radio, but if we're talking about structure and music, music was never made to be put out very fast, and music was never made to just be stagnant and doing the same thing over and over and over again. So that's all up to you. Uh, in the back. Huh? Did I side chain the kick? No, I did not side chain the kick. But the, you could try to go home and side chain your kick and see what happened. It might be raw. Uh, what's up? All right, uh, real quick, could you guys repeat the questions? Okay, uh, cool. And then we only got like one or two more. We got to move on. Okay, cool. We got three more producers. That's so for yeah. sure. You? Uh, creative block? Oh uh, yeah, man. Uh, just you just got to stop making music. You got to go outside and do something. You know what? Like, you know what's hella crazy about producers and artists and rappers and shit like that? Everybody got a lifestyle, right? But no one has a life. It's the weirdest shit. Like you gotta go out and live a little bit. You can't just be stuck at home in a computer just looking at shit, like thinking that you're just going, oh, I'm gonna make a clap, it's gonna clap, it's gonna come. No, go breathe, go take your dog for a walk, go to the movies, go get inspired by life and come back and listen to it on fresh ears. You'll probably like do something crazy. So that's the best way, just wait, patience. All right, last one, anybody? Anyone, yeah, right here? How do I choose people to feature on my songs? So the way I choose people to feature on my songs is I I'm I just like I'm a fan like I'm a fan of music I'm a fan of everybody I don't really have like I, like as an artist like I know I'm an artist and I know that I too have fans but they're the only way I was ever started was gonna ever make music is by being a fan so if I'm a fan of you I'm gonna like probably try possibly try to reach out and if we have a more than anything is just having a cool connection like with Sid I met Sid like four. Four or five years ago, I did a show, opened up for the internet. It's when we both was just started doing our own like things, um, and uh, and I just we just recently did that song earlier this year, and uh, that was just from just building with her and just seeing how cool of an individual she was. It was just like when we got in the lab, we wrote the song, and it just clicked because we were friends. So that's kind of how I choose, just off vibes. Like if you're cool, 
that if your music's cool, that's one thing. But if you're cool, then it's like, oh yeah, let's work. You know, that's that's how I pick. So yeah, that's it. So I'm gonna pass the mic to Kuya. Uh, give it up for Jam, folks. So, Jay, tracks, everybody in here. Uh, while they're, while we're setting up the video portion of this, um, I really wanna um, I really wanna shout out. And really shout out Jay for, for mentioning the fact that working with people and being with genuine people um, makes the music better. Um, a lot of times we kind of get, as artists, it's kind of easy to fall into this trap where we say, um, you know, I'm just going to create my own stuff. Um, you know, I'm not going to I'm not going to link up with anybody. I don't really want I don't really like working with people. Um, and that's kind of like goes against what music is supposed to do. Music is supposed to bring people together. Um, because no matter how old we get or how, you know, young people are, people are still going to want to link up and, and they're going to gather around music. Um, and that's never going to change. So um, for with that being said, you know, as if you're an artist, if you're a producer, make sure that you're reaching out to people. Make sure that you're collaborating with, with, with people. And that's how you guys make good music. And when you can bring people together, then you've done something um, really, really well. So... Um, the first song I'm gonna break down today, and mine's isn't as a, a glorious story of what, how I made a song. More, mine's is more of like a, like an accident, <laughs> because um, this song called "So Right" featuring um, from my brother Pilo, um, featuring Samaria, was a song that I produced at my job. I work at a school in Walnut Creek, and I'm an educator as well. And I actually ended up uh, making this bass line in the studio. And then my homie who teaches guitar class, his name is Zach Mack. He's like an OG like guitar player from Richmond. But we ended up r working randomly at this place in Walnut Creek. Went to Berkeley School of Music, and he's a guitar player. And he was like, oh my god, I want to play something over that, 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 uh, that bass line you made. Um, and then from that point on, the song kind of came about. I added weird sounds after that, which were struck down and said, <laughs> hey, yo, take them sounds out, fam. Um, <laughs> Which is, you know, which is part of the production process. And I think, you know, for being an artist, you have to make yourself vulnerable to that sort of criticism, which is really, really important. Um, but it's tough, because I didn't play beats for people for like my first two years of producing. Um, and then now little kids just, you know, come on the board and they're just like, ill. I'm like, oh my God, this generation's crazy. But anyways, um, <laughs> kids just come out the womb making beats now. And I'm like, oh my Lord. I, w I wish I had an iPad when I was like eight. But the thing is, is that this generation is so tight because you guys are so open-minded and you guys have such an awesome like perspective on the world, um, and it's it, yeah, it's awesome. So I'm gonna start off with playing the song. Um, I don't know if you guys heard it. I don't know if you know my brother Pilo, but my boy Zach Mack is on the co-production with me. So I'm gonna play this song first. I'm not gonna blow out your eardrums. I promise. Yeah, baby, I did. Hey. Girl, let me see you rock to this. Girl, let me see you rock. Hey, you in the time code in the summer. I wish I could smash when I wanna. But now I'm gonna come up. Ain't left your man, but you gonna. Just to come rock with a stunner. Think you look better when you bum me. Boy, shorts hand the pony. Wake up to your lips in the morning. What you want for your B day? I know I could afford it. We could ball out like the courts here. The saw net. Ain't like your man, girl, he all flex. You know I make it wet just like faucets. I could work it out just like CrossFit. Make it all thin, you say all oh, shit. Hey, damn baby, what you gon' do? Hey, do you act like I'm supposed to? Hey, now I'm looking like the go to. Hey, cause I'm the one you wanna go to. Hey, you make me feel alright. Give me up when you on this side. Give me feels in the summer. Correction, this was destined. Call him Wolverine and make him your ex man. Grabbing on your booty while you getting rested. Ain't no question who the best is. Got my checklist and you number one. Love how you do your thing, girl. You coming up. Your man stop trying like he done enough. But I could treat you so special like a one on one. Uh, yeah. I think you are rare fine. Keep it straight with me like airlines. When I'm inside, it fit airtight. I'm glad we united like airlines. Damn, baby, what you gon' do? Hey, do you act 
right like I'm supposed to. Hey, now I'm looking like a go-to. Hey, cause I'm the one you wanna go to. So that was the song. Give it up, folks. And um, I started off with the bass line first. So I'll, I'll break down just the beat real quick. And then um, I'll tell you what I really like about that song. And it's the bridge for me. Um, I think the bridge was a portion that I really, the song didn't have the bridge at first. And I really wanted to open up the song and kind of give the listener something to have towards the end of the song. Um, so it's not as repetitive. But we started off with the bass line. Um, so this is the bass line that I started off with. And I'm sitting in the studio, like little kids are like knocking on the window, like, hey, can I, where, where this at? And I'm like, oh, right now, right now, not right now. And uh, good, you know, my homie Zach comes in with like the little instructional guitar. It's got like nylon uh, guitar strings. They're not even the real guitar strings. So he starts playing the shady guitar into the mic, and I'm like, okay, yeah, that sounds hard. It sounds like some like Janet Jackson, some sort of like Tony, Tony, Tony stuff. I'm like, please keep going, please keep going. And he starts adding these layers of the of the guitar. Um, and then I send this version over to Pilo, and he's like. He's like, I don't know, man. It's like, it's, it's just missing something. He wrote the whole song to the beat already. Um, and he wrote the, the, the portion that Samaria sang. But, um, but what I wanted to add was the, uh, the bridge. And the bridge was the really uh, the important part to me because I wanted to make it sound like she got shot out into space. Um, and in Reason, there's this, there's, um, there's this uh, effect that you can use to kind of create this effect of like, it's called a multi-effect. Um, pattern or whatever and I forgot which one I did and this is the sound I wanted to do to create that this effect it just sounds super spacey so I wanted to create that effect like she was just floating in air singing and then like kind of falls back down to earth um, but yeah um, good songs can kind of happen in like random places and that's why it's like you know, being inspired in the moment, you kind of have to capture that. Um, and yeah, that was kind of my experience with the song. It was, it was a very based experience. Um, and it's kind of weird talking about it in front of a room full of people. But uh, I appreciate you guys listening and <laughs> coming into my mind for a second. Um, but yeah, that's that's what happened. Um, yeah. Yes, it was, it was. It was Give like, it up for Kuya, folks. <laughs> Yeah, please. Uh, here, I'm gonna give you the mic for the well, questions. Okay. So, how did you? Wh what was the question again? I'm sorry. All right. Hi, my name is Caleb. Um, That's I really like the mix on that one. Like it was, it was real clean. But you had all those spacey elements. Uh huh. So how did you? I want to say separate them. Uh huh. And make them sound like a unit with uh -huh. like maintaining the body. But of like it wasn't muddy, but like yeah. Using and reason, uh, reason has like awesome like effects that are made just for those sounds. And sometimes I like keeping the effects in reason because like reason sounds are built for those effects. Sometimes you have like people trying to put sounds on Pro Tools and and like trying to put the effects on Pro Tools, which is which is awesome. 
Um, but I really like tweaking the sounds here in, in Reason and, and sending off um, the the, audio, the tracks, the audio tracks off to the mixer so they can kind of like just either just play with the levels or do that. I don't know if I answered your question, but um, yeah, that's what I did. I just messed with it on Reason. <laughs> Frequency. <laughs> I'm a control freak. All right, I'm up. What's up, y'all? Y'all still here with us? Yee! All right. So my name is Max Kane. I come from a crew called 41 Funk. Um, we do hip hop, we do trap, we do funk, soul, all kinds of stuff. I mostly specialize in the funk. Y'all know about the funk, right? I mean, not like the type of funk that like your parents listen to, more like the DJ Quick type of funk. That's where I'm coming from. Oh, I'm trying to come from anyways. I mean, that's a big, like, alkali, so that's not, you know what I'm trying to say. So, anyways, the song I'm going to play is a song that I put out on a label. I put it out on one of those things called records. Have you guys heard of those? Yeah. And I, I was actually able to sell a couple of them, which was kind of cool. Um, the song is called Out of My Mind. It's featuring Zachy Force Funk, who's a singer. And my boy Tico, he's from outer space, which is cool because he's from outer space. And it's... Uh, Basically, I wrote the hook to this song because I was listening to Gap Band, um, Yearning for Your Love, and I couldn't get it out of my head. I was like, keep yearning, can't keep it out of my mind. So when you hear the song, you kind of get it. That's where I got the bass line from. So here we go. kind of fades out right there. So yeah, that's... So that's my take on the funk. You know what I mean? I grew up in the Bay. I like that slap. I like hyphy shit, excuse my language. I like hip hop. I like all that shit. So when I make funk, I try to put all that in, into, into, my, into my funk. 808s, fat claps. I, I probably spent like a couple days just working on the claps because I heard that's what Roger Z and Zap used to do. They used to sit there, have people just come into the studio. Y'all know who Roger and Zap is, Zap? More bouncing outs. And just have people do claps. And so 
Um, I spend a lot of time on my drums, making my drums fat. If it doesn't knock, it wouldn't come out to y'all. Y'all be like, uh, cool. But long story short, I don't have the session on me, so I'm just going to tell you how I did it. I usually start out with a chord progression. I sit there on a piano. Ding, 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 start working on chords. Start trying to come up with something interesting. Maybe a couple beautiful chords, then a tension chord at the end. Okay, and then I just, I either take those chords, put them back in my sampler, start messing around with it, ding, 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 start playing around with it. Maybe I come up with some, maybe I don't. In this case, I did. Uh, the song was about two minutes long, and I was like, that's too short. So that's why I put the end part on there, because I needed more of a song. Um, I love Talkbox. That was the robots. Y'all know what Talkbox is, right? Talkbox is different than Auto-Tune or a vocorder. Talkbox has got a lot of expression. You use the keys to play out all the notes. So you could really, I mean, you could funk it out. You could get some really awesome stuff. And I mean, that doesn't just go for funk, y'all. That goes for everything. That goes for hyphy slaps. That goes for trap. The vocorder is a fresh sound. So uh, we wrote the hook, like I said, from uh, kind of stole, took that Gap Band riff and just roll with it. And for me, I, when I listen to it, I don't even know that I took it from there. Now, a lot of people don't even notice that I took it from there. So... Taking things, sampling, stealing, whatever you want to call it, it's all right as long as you put your own spit into it. Feel me? It's okay. Don't worry. People get so wrapped up on, like, certain sounds. And so just do what you like. And, and if you put enough work into it and enough of your heart into it, it's going to be fresh. And that's, that's all I do. I, I'm nothing special, so that's, that's what I do. And, uh, yeah, I guess that's it. Does anybody have any questions for me at all? Yeah, JN. Them was some hella fat ass sounds and bass lines. So like what keyboards are you using exactly? I don't know if I missed it, but what exactly are you using to get those sounds? Because a lot of sounds that this guy uses, like those are sounds that you just can't get out of reason. Like uh, once you get past like the bass line is just, oh, that bass line tight. Then you, once you get past like that, the sound of the bass line, then you're like, damn, I wonder why this man fool his bass line more full in mind is because he using one of them, them thick ass, some real ass keyboards. That's hard. So I want to know what you using, big dog. What's happening? You are correct. Um, man, I have a JX3P rolling. I have a six track uh, sequential circuits. I ha I had a profit. We use the profit on this. Also, that bass line. What I do is I take if I'm gonna use like um, soft sense. On Logic, I'll take like five different soft synths, press record on all those bitches, and stack them like, yunk. And, and that's just what I just did that, because I was like, dang, all these soft synths sounds like I heard them. And they don't really sound like my, my analog, so I'll start stacking them. But in that one, that was all. And I think I did the chords on a, on a real Rhodes. And I just sampled it and just threw it in like the MP or something like that. Right on, but good looking. Anyone else? Yes, sir. I'm definitely. Please, uh, Max, repeat the question just because the stream, the people on Facebook and YouTube can't hear him. Okay, let's repeat the question. You oh. repeat the question. Oh, you were asking me. <laughs> you're going to say what he just asked you, and then you're going to answer it. Man, that's complicated. Okay. <laughs> I'm a stoner, man. I got a good memory like that. That's a whole other thing. So the question was, uh, <laughs> do you create your own patches, or do you use presets? So, you know, with analog synth life and all that. <laughs> Thank you, Ben. You um, can go from there. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, um, I definitely, definitely get in there. I get in there. I definitely... If a preset, I more or less I I would use a preset. If it's if I if if I press, you know, D sharp on the key and it was a good note and the tone was right, I'll use it. If it's not right, I'll sit there and tweak it. I'll sit there for hours. I'll sit there for days until I get it right because 
I mean, you have to use your oscillators and your filters and everything else. I even take guitar pedals and go out of my analog synths into guitar pedals. I even do bass lines on my turntable so you could get little scratching, things like that, that you really couldn't get on, some, on a keyboard, maybe on the uh, mod or uh, the uh, pitch band. But yeah, like I definitely try to sit there and tweak my sounds so they fit. They fit Max. They fit me. They fit what I what I'm looking for. And uh, yeah, I, I do it a lot. I suggest not taking as long as I take sometimes on that. <laughs> All right. Anyone else? Yes. One more. Um, I do do that, but sometimes I have to let stuff go. I use it for like educational purposes, for my own education. I'm like, I liked where I went with it, but if I'm not feeling it, I'm just gonna let it go. And if I'm really feeling it, if it's stuck in my head, go with it. If it, you got some, that's like my biggest thing. Like if it's stuck in my head and I'm like, I keep hearing it, I'm gonna go for it because I, I trust myself. And I suggest everybody in here trusts themselves because producing and making music is making a decision. You can sit there all day because Every single program has a million sounds and a million presets and everything. You can sit there and play with it all day, but sooner or later, you're gonna have to make a decision to which one you wanna use and stop, and that's good. So I hope that answers your question, but I definitely have tons of undone sessions, but I try to recognize, hone down, and get stuff done. But yes, I do do that, and I just, you have to work overtime while doing that. Because, you know, if you made 12 beats, you sat there for two days making 12 beats and you're not doing anything with those beats, somewhere, you know, you gotta, if you were trying to put something out, you gotta hone down, and finish it up. Word up. Give it up for Max Kane, folks. Thanks for having me, y'all. Track of Demons. Yeah. L L's one over here. You know what I'm saying? I, I actually went to one of this guy's DJ battles back in the day. He was battling my friend. Now he showed up at a guitar center back when he was, uh, you know, scratching and all the turntable stuff. Very dope, dude. <laughs> yeah. Also. But um, oh yeah, let me plug this in and get this going. Ah, there we go. <laughs> All right. Uh, which one's your All favorite? right. I, I sure think. Uh, All right. I'm a, I'm I'm very indecisive. <laughs> you should be good. So uh, I'm very indecisive. I didn't know what to show you about like five beats, but I'm I may I'm gonna show one for sure. I'm gonna do this one. Maybe do another one. But um, so. I, I want to play you guys. You guys heard of Kamaya? Shout out to Kamaya. Yeah. Oakland. Yeah. Um, so I had a chance to produce uh, a couple songs with her, um, me and 108K. Um, and this is one of the ones I did called Freaky Freaks. Have you guys heard of this? I'm not playing the whole song. I'm going to play a little bit. Just so you get your ears wet to it. You know what I'm saying? Oh, wait. Oh, you know what that's <laughs> That's enough. That's inappropriate. It's inappropriate. I apologize. But um, we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about the music. So um, check it out. So <laughs> it's too inappropriate. Um, so originally, we, um, you know, t working on the project, we had to figure out, we sat down with the artists and they were like, I want kind of like a West Coast, a West Coast feel beat. We want to bring, uh, kind of like bring old, 90s hip hop back, you know, like you're talking about DJ Quick. I'm thinking like a lot of West Coast, like Death Row, Snoop, Snoop Dre, and all that. And um, 
you know, uh, so I, this is one of those beats that I thought on after having that conversation, and I was like, ooh, I got it. Everybody's flipping 90s stuff. I used to be against that. I used to be like, no, nah, you can't flip stuff. But, um, you know, I was like, I came up with an idea to flip an old Snoop song called Doggy Dog World. Anybody heard that song? Yes. Yeah. Play Can it. we get a motherfucking <laughs> You know what? I'm not going to play that song. Maybe I can't. No, what we going to do is go inside. You know, some of these niggas is so deceptive. Using my styles like a contraceptive. Okay, you guys know that song. <laughs> Man, rap music is crazy. Um, so, you could hear that bass line already, right? Uh, that was the first thing I heard. I was like, that bass line is very dope. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work on that. So, what I decided to do was uh, make the beat. And I started this beat with the bass line, so... So I was like, oh, and then a lot of times I start with chords, but when it's rhythmic rap music, I'm like, I need to, I need to get that bounce. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I can't say that drums aren't always my favorite thing to do, but I ended up doing the, um, what's it called next? The, I believe it is the clap. No, it's, that's not the clap. Where is my clap? Hold on. As you can see, I don't know if you guys can see my actual session. A lot of you Reason users, I actually use stock Reason sounds along with my own custom sounds just because, you know, um, whatever it is available to you, you can. it's, it's up to you. You can use it. So um, where are my claps, though? This is not it. No. Oh, no, snaps. Got the snaps. Yeah. So let's throw that in there. Um, just That's the groove right there. You can stop. But uh, me, I'm very corded out, and I was like, I wanted to take, be inspired by the chords that was in the original song, but then kind of do my own. So, threw those in there. That's a, that's one of those refills. So it's very, very smooth and chill. Um, okay. Oh, I just passed the chords. So, what am I doing? Oh yeah, I'm gonna go to the drums. I added, I added some drums. So a kip, kick, and a snare. That's, that's a good little accoutrement of symbols. <laughs> little, you know, like Jay Ant was talking about, space is very important because someone needs to rap over this. Yeah. Right? Hats. Very simple, very simple beat. Adding the piano. Very simple beat, like Reason, Laptop, beat, you know, it's got a lot of plays, I'm excited, it's a good song. Um, I think one of the most important things about making, uh, about producing a song is the arrangement, right? And Dan was saying it could be, what did you say, 5000 or 50 or you say $50 or $50,000, right? Uh, the, the, the artist that got on top of this made this beat go even harder than what the beat was going to be if it just sat there. It's a good beat, but like, you know, an artist that, that knows how to write a good song and make it catchy and, and has good hooks can take that beat very far. Um, so, yeah, as you can see, it's a very simple beat. Um, I don't know. I don't have that much more to say about it. Any questions? I, okay, well, we, we have some questions, but... Uh, only if the, you, I believe you have another beat you were thinking of of, of showing us the the creation story behind too the old school one. yeah the the, the yes. one <laughs> the right, one so, so that's right. what we can close with that if we want though yeah you, no I'm, definitely you I can do that stuff. after we can take questions on this one and then go right to that okay mm -hmm. uh, right there in the back. Um, I mean, the main thing with sampling for me, because I love to sample, I love to remix. Uh, that's kind of what built, built. that's what I built my career on. It's kind of derivative, like referential music, because we've all come from somewhere. A lot of you listen to the, parent, the music that your parents listened to. You know, that was all that I knew at first. And so uh, sampling is just natural. That's what hip-hop was built on. If you want to talk about... Um, you know, it's got heavy Jamaican roots with the DJing and, and, and just the breaks they used to bring, bring back in the day. It was just kids 
you know, same as y'all that that decided like I'm gonna flip this. And so like yeah, sampling is 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 a very integral part of what I do. I love it. I'm I'm always gonna do it. I got there was one all the way in the way way back. Oh, the hand is down. All right, you had a question, right? This one. Um, uh, repeat it, the questions, please. Okay. okay. Did I compress the kick? Um, when I made it, I don't. E I didn't even worry about it. Um, this one, I think this is actually look giving up all the game. This is a <laughs> this is a stock reason kick called in the down low, Kong. Yeah, that one and that one's already very punchy. Um, and I, I think we just EQ'd a little bit. Uh, I didn't. I didn't do it in this session that you guys heard right here. Every there's not really hardly any compression going on. It's pretty much just stock coming through. We. I mean, definitely had to do do, do a little bit of roll off um, and EQing in the final mix though. All right, uh, right here. Um, so you can see this is a regular stock 808 too. This is just the Thor 808. Um, you know, 108K, he always be telling me, he's like, it's other 808s you can use. <laughs> and I'll be like, I love this one. Cause you know, you can tweak it all in here. So on this one, I think I just, I, I um, took up some of the attack, right? I took off some of the attack so you can like, it doesn't punch right off top. And then I, and then I changed the, um, I guess the duration, like the, the um, the release on the envelope, yeah. So it just like hit the plays the the right amount of time that I wanted it to play. Yeah. All right, we had right here and then right there and then that might be fine. Mm -hmm. uh, Liam, go for it. Uh, occasionally, I mean, being being in the Reason universe, propeller head. That's the that's the one hard thing about Reason, right? Is like if you're all in compass, you can't really use the VSTs. But I also produce in Pro Tools, so sometimes. Um, sometimes, occasionally, I use native instruments. I like UVI. Um, I like Arturia. You know, those those synths are really dope. Um, uh, when I plug in with Pro Tools, so yeah, I feel like there's so many there's so many different kinds of sounds. It really is whatever you whatever you gravitate towards. You know, but yeah, that uh, I'm down with all of them. <laughs> all right, uh, but camo bucket hat life. Yeah, I guess it's a high road bucket hat. My bad. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like Jay had just said, get it close. Get it as close as possible. Um, me, I actually, it's funny, I mix a lot of my own stuff. I don't, I never did it professionally, like I didn't go to school for it. But um, I feel like I have a decent ear, and so I can make it, you know, pretty good. But they're, they're, you want to get it as good as you can and then pass it off to somebody. Because I don't want to, I wouldn't say do it yourself. I would not say that. That's, if that's not your passion and love is frequency and doing the math and science behind it, I just like composing and arranging and, and you know, making the music. But um, you do want to get it as close as you can so that someone, you can ballpark it and someone understands, like, okay, he was trying to go here. Let me take it that extra, you know, 10, 15% that they couldn't do. Cool. One last question. We good? All right. All right. Cool. So I have one more. There's a quick story. There's a quick story behind this one. So when I made this song, it's a remix. When I made this remix, I was actually working at Youth Radio, um, what you guys would call the first floor. It was before. <laughs> he's like, just play it. Uh, before before uh, Youth Radio was in, in Oakland, we were in Berkeley, and uh, I was working um, you know, doing core. Uh, y'all don't have y'all just sell pizza? Uh, nah, it's healthier got, now. Nah, we used to serve pizza. I used to order the pizza, uh, <laughs> but um, but yeah. So I made this remix uh, after work one day. Um, bought the vinyl. Um, bought the sample for it in the same record trip. Just happened that way. Went back to the studio, made the beat, and uh, it went crazy. Like while I was making it, I think it was the first time. Probably one of the first times I ever was like, oh my God, this is a hit. I've never felt that before, you know? Like where you're like, people are gonna actually like this song. Like, I don't, I'm not the only one that likes this song. Like other people are gonna like this song. Uh, and so I went and bought the vinyl for Tell Me When To Go. Um, 
hyphy music, hyphy movement. Like right when it came out, right? So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I never did release the instrumental. That's funny. But um, I went, I went and bought, well, let me see, let me back that up right quick. I went and bought this sample. It doesn't say, you see how it just says, tell me when to go sample. Because DJs, DJs will be all up in your computer and they want to know. So I bought this sample. It's from, hang, it's from this group that Jay Dilla sampled for the for um, his song Players. So if you could find Jay Dilla, who would group Jay Dilla sample for Players, that's the group. Then you got to go dig through all their stuff because I'm not going to tell you exactly. But you know, that, that brought it down a lot. Who sampled the police? Oh, all, all day. The police? <laughs> oh, yeah, no, nah, exactly. It's, it's, anyway, we can get into that later. Um, so anyway, brought that. That was the sample. Um, do I have, oh yeah. Oh, I accidentally pressed record, I apologize. Um, so bought that, um, I chopped it up, and so I didn't originally do it on here, Reason, I wasn't using Reason as heavily at the time. I did it on the ASR 88. Um, and so these are the stems, so there's just audio in here. But um, this is how I pitched it down, slowed it down. Instrumental. <laughs> All right. Uh, all right. You said what? On MySpace, right? Yeah. Well, so 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 that's the second half of the story. Man, crazy, right? So a lot of <laughs> man. So here's the funny part. So when I went, I made this. I made this on like a Tuesday night because records used to come out on Tuesday, right? Um, that was release day. Uh, I made it on Tuesday night, came back to youth radio in the daytime, burned a bunch of CDs. You know, it wasn't, we had MySpace, but I burned a bunch of CDs, gave them out, gave them out to all the core class, right? Gave them out to the core class. And I, I remember it just started to spread. I put it on my MySpace and it just started to spread like crazy. Um, this is before, I mean, like I say, MySpace, before SoundCloud, 
Um, people were still buying a lot of CDs. There weren't, um, it was in mid flux, right? So we, I feel like our generation was the first internet music generation. And so like my, 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 uh, my space went crazy. This is even before YouTube was important. So like, I don't, I think it got on YouTube maybe like two or three years afterwards, but yeah, like my space is really important, but yeah, that just, just it's important to like realize like I know everybody's trying to get traction. And I, I literally youth radio was like, just the students at youth radio were like, oh, they went played it and then they spread it to their schools. You guys know, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they went to school and played it. Yeah, <laughs> I would get. I had one of those yeah. CDs. Yeah, burnt CDs and it's cool. But yeah, that that's that. I mean, um, I don't know. I feel like. The, my, my approach to music making, I can say I'm not a perfectionist, at least to like a lot of people. I mean, I, I put in a lot of work, but I, there's a lot of stuff that other people are concerned with where I'm like, man, it's good, whatever. I don't worry about it. Um, just because it almost takes away from the fun aspect of it. And I know I definitely still do it for love, but there's a, there's a balance you have to strike, right? That you're like, okay, this product here, this is an A-level project that I need to make sure it's perfect. This other thing, it still has to be representative of me, but this is not the the major uh, main event. So there's, I mean, there's different ways. It depends on the kind of artist you want to be, and and just you know producing, remixing, just making beats, getting all of it out there. There's many different ways you could do it, and so yeah, because I listen. This one slaps because I made it on car speakers, but um, I made it on a pair of tens, like that you put in your trunk. But um, yeah, like. It was made very low tech, but I, you know I feel like that it worked for this. Yeah, yeah, high five yeah. slap. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, everybody, give it up for our panelists, please. Um, so I'm gonna say really quickly, thank you to the. Oakland Music Festival for helping us put this together. Thank you to all the producers for sharing their time. You guys got like 10 ultra secret sessions. Sid the Kid and Tell Me When To Go samples and crazy stuff. So I hope you guys appreciated it. Um, for OMF, just so you guys know, they have another free event that is also all ages right after this with another Youth Radio alum singing, actually. So Rihanna J and Elu J are going to be at Oaklandish right after this. That's 8 to 10. Um, and then for the 18 and over folks, of course, Jayant will be at the New Parish tonight, uh, about two blocks away. Um, so please, frequent those performances. Thank you guys for coming out. We have had DJ Imperial over here on the ones and twos. She's gonna play some music, but we gotta clear the space because it's dang near time for us to get out of here. Soil where them rappers be getting they lingo from. Ooh. Tell me when to go. 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 go.
Tell me when to go. Tell me when to go. Tell me when to go. Tell me when to go. Tell me when to go. Tell me when to go. Traffic for Talk a to him. Let me tell y'all about this hockey movement we got going in the back. When I say something, you say it right back at me. You smell we're gonna do it like this here. Ghost 